Praise the Lord, Pastor James T. Illum Jr. God bless you this morning. Welcome to our broadcast. You know, I'm just so honored today to come into your, your homes uh, with the Word of God. The Lord showed me this year um, is the year of the anointing. Um, the anointing is burning, removing, yoke, the strong power. It is the uh, presence and the power of the Holy Ghost. And the anointing lives on the inside of the believer. And this year will be a great year for you. Keep your head up, no matter what's going on, something good is about to happen to you. Um, today, the Word of God is coming. Um, feel free to receive the Word, take notes, and something powerful is about to take place in your life. Watch this. talk about tonight living in the last days the Lord shared something with me that COVID-19 is the dress rehearsal it's a dress rehearsal for the future we haven't seen anything yet and so we need to make sure that we are in line with God's word and has his protection Psalms 91 over us as we move forward and understand that Jesus is coming again. Praise God. And so I want to start off here, praise God, with this tonight, get right into it. And um, we see here in Hebrews, <clears throat> let's go first to Hebrews, why is this so important? Because a lot of people, you know, say that they've been hearing that since, you know, there was a child that Jesus is coming again. Well, look what it says here in Hebrews 9, Hebrews 9 and 25, not yet that he should offer him often um, as the high priest entered into the holy place. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. What this is saying right here is that Jesus came to put away sin with the sacrifice of himself. He gave his life. He gave his life for you. He gave his life for me. And check this out. And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this is judgment. So everybody that's listening to me, everybody who's ever lived on this earth, uh, is appointed for you to die, and after you die, there's judgment. It's not judgment if you think that it does uh, apply to you. It's not judgment if you think, well, I, I don't want to agree with that. No, if you are a human being, everybody must die, um, and you will have judgment. You have to be judged because sin, Adam and Eve sinned, and you came into the world a sinner. You're not a sinner because you sin. You're a sinner because of God's, um, you are a sinner because of what Adam and Eve did. Your nature is a, is a sinner. So that means when we come into the world, we already come in with a sin nature. Uh, we're spiritually dead, so Jesus had to come. So Jesus came, glory to God, and now he put away sin. I love that, to put away sin. And it says here, if you keep reading, verse 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time with, without sin unto salvation. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for him. He said, once those who believe on him and start expecting his return, you will see him. Praise God. Look what it says in the Amplified Bible. I love it. Even so, it is that Christ, having been offered to take upon himself and bear the, as a burden the sins of many once and once for all, will appear the second time not to carry any burden of sin, not to deal with sin but to bring to full salvation those 
who are eagerly, constantly, patiently waiting for him and expecting him. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming back. And we need to expect, but he's not coming back to deal with sin. Why? Because he's already dealt with sin. If you believe on him, he put every sin on him on the cross. So now we are believers and we need to know who we are. And those who have not done yet, that yet, this is your sermon tonight. And those who have already experienced and done that, this is your sermon tonight. Because I'm telling you, I'm sure he's saying he's coming like a thief in the night. He said he's coming. He's not giving you warning. He said he's coming. And the Bible says, he's, will he find faith and love and, and, and hope for his salvation? So in other words, it's telling us this is very important. In 1 Thessalonians 5, he says, for those believers, he's coming, but will he find faith? Will he find love? And will he find you hoping for, expecting his return for your salvation? So in other words, it's telling us, everybody tonight need to believe on Jesus, my God, before he come back. He's on the way back, my God. And those that already believe in him, keep your faith in Christ. Faith in Christ. My, my faith is in him. I believe on him. I'm not, I'm not saved by my effort. I'm not saved because of my works. I put my faith in Christ. And then it says love. So in other words, no wonder, no wonder uh, Jesus gave this new commandment for everybody. A new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. Glory to God. So in other words, Jesus is coming back, and when he come back, will he find love? Amen. So in other words, what we got to do is make sure we position ourselves to do what we are supposed to do, because I'm telling you, um, I'm going out, and you should be going out too, in your mindset, on the first resurrection. When he raptured us, when he comes back, what we doing, we believing on him, our faith is in Christ, and we're walking in love. Love is the key. Lord have mercy. Oh, man. And so I'm telling you right now, I'm going to get into this because this is very vital. This is very important. I found out now why everybody has been talking about this and everybody always mocked this and everybody, you know, because the enemy knows he only got a few days left. And so now everything is turning around. The Bible says, you know, the signs of the times. You might not know the day, not the hour where he shall appear, but you will know the seasons because he said there is the signs of the time. In Matthew 24, the signs of the time. There will be wars and rumors or wars. My God, we're in war right now. There will be earthquakes. My God, I'm telling you, we had more earthquakes this year than we had last year. My God, there will be pestilence and sickness. We're dealing with a pandemic right now. And he says these are the beginning of sorrows. It will be like birth pains. In other words, it's telling us everything will be like birth pains of a woman when she's having a baby. The intensity. Every time it's going to get stronger. Every time it's going to get stronger. Every time it's going to get stronger. Oh, man. I'm telling you right now. So we know those things are are happening. We are actually in the last days, and people don't, they're not even paying no attention to it. People going on eating at the restaurants. They're going to the mall. They're going on vacation. Ain't nobody never thinking about the Lord, and the Lord already prophesied. Every word that he ever said is going to come to pass. So I'm telling you right now, we need to understand we are in the last days. <laughs> Somebody type in the last days. Lord, have mercy. I'm telling you right now. So this is what we got to do. Look at this. I love this in Acts 17. Amen. I got about 10 sermons in me tonight, but I'm going I'm to I'm come on down and do a little series. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But I, this is so very important because um, we are, we, 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 it's a dress rehearsal, getting ready to go back when he comes. This is why we live for him. Amen. Look, look what it says here in Acts 17. I love this. Acts 17 and verse 30, it says, And the times of this ignorance God winked at. Whew. Lord have mercy. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. In other words, some of the things that we went through, God winked at. He, know, he, he, he allowed a lot of things in the earth. But now it's time to repent. Glory to God. Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. In other words, what this saying, he's appointed already a day. 
he already know the day that he will judge the world. In other words, the world is not getting away. The believer gets saved so they wouldn't have to be judged anymore, but the world is going to be judged because sin is in the world. You, they're going to judge, he's going to judge the world not because they are sinning, not because they kill somebody, not because they, 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 they're not living holy. He's going to judge the world because, listen, every wages of sin is death. They have come short of the glory of God, of the glory of Jesus. For those who reject Jesus, he will judge the world. So that's why we're living for him so we can live this life and prosper. But when he comes back, we won't be here for the judgment. Lord, have mercy. And look what it says here. Oh, Lord. Somebody say, I'm scared. Yeah, this going to scare the H-E-L-L out of you tonight. My God, if you got any type, of, <laughs> any type of, you need to get scared. I need to scare you because, you know, tomorrow is not promised. We don't know if he's coming back tonight. We don't know if he's coming back right now. Why? Because the, he's gave the earth a 6,000-year 6 6, lease, and he said there was 2,000 years of grace, then it was 2,000 years of the law, and then it was 2,000 years after grace, since the, Jesus died on the cross. It's been, so it's already come. He can come back tonight. Somebody said, why he ain't came back? Because the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He wishes none to perish. Somebody not ready. He's showing mercy and grace because he knows everybody hasn't heard the gospel yet. Everybody hasn't received him yet. Amen. So I'm telling you right now, there's a point in time coming. There's a time. Don't let nobody de deceive you. Don't let nobody tell you, don't pay attention to this. I'm telling you right now, there's an appointed time. In other words, that the rapture is coming. My God. And he will judge the world in righteousness. Verse 31. And by that man whom he has obtained... That's Jesus, where he has given assurance to all men that in that have raised him from the dead. So in other words, Jesus died and was raised from the dead so we can believe on him, so we can miss that judgment. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't tribulate enough. I'm not going to go through no more. I don't need no more tribulation. Amen. Can you imagine the tribulation that's going to be on this earth when the church is taken out? There's no more prayer, no more intercession, and Lord have mercy, and the church is going to be raptured and taken out, and then there will be seven years of tribulation that you are going to have to go through if you're left here. Oh, man. I'm telling you right now. So that's why we live. That's why we're, we're talking about this. It is the last days. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Look what it says here if you keep reading. And verse 32, and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mock, and others said, we will hear these again on, on, uh, uh, on, on, of this matter later on. In other words, some mock. They mock then, they're mocking now. They're mocking, they're scoffing, they're, let, they're, they're, they're doubting, they're, they're, they're playing, picking fun. You know, he, he ain't coming back. Where is he? You know, and all this. They don't think he's coming back. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, he's coming. He's on the way. Praise God. So Paul, I love it here. Paul departed from among them. How be it certain men clave unto him and believe there will be someone who will believe my prayer tonight is that you will believe some people are not going to believe so i'm going to get the scriptures and break it down um so uh, a child could understand this praise god so we can know that we can stir ourselves up and no matter what we go through no matter what we face our hope is in jesus he's coming back again Somebody say, is this COVID-19 the mark of the beast? No, it's not the mark of the beast. It is a rehearsal for the future. It is nothing for what really is going to happen in this earth. Amen. So in other words, I'm telling you right now, we need to understand. We need to get this. I'm telling you tonight. So let's get into it. Praise God. Let's get into it. Oh, man. You know, somebody type in, he's on the way. Lord have mercy. But grace and mercy, 
I want to show you the grace and mercy of Jesus, though. My, he's on the way, but his grace and mercy is going to take the church out of the earth before the judgment hits. Amen. Look at this. Look at, um, glory to God. Look at um, First Thessalonians. Whew. Glory to God. First Thessalonians. Let's look at that. Chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. So let's, let's get into the word so you have the scriptures so you can meditate and even know how to witness to others. Even know how to share this with your friends and your family. Look what it says here. I love it here. Oh, man, look what it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant. Ignorant means not knowing. So that's why we need to talk about this, so we won't be um, not knowing. Amen. Because somebody need to know what to do. If the rapture come, may, my God, and the church is gone and you still healed, you need to know what to do. Do not take the mark of the beast. I got to get into it. Amen. No matter what you go through, my God, I'm telling you, you got to get saved in the rapture. Get saved in the seven-year tribulation. Do not let that enemy and the, the Antichrist uh, deceive you. My God, you're going to have to know that. Praise God. Look what it says. Don't be ignorant. Oh, man, brethren, concerning them that are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others have no hope. For, we, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. In other words, those that die in the Lord, don't, don't weep. Don't, 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 don't worry about them. They, they, they died in him. They, they, they are okay. They are asleep. They are with Jesus, my Lord. I'm telling you right now. So it tells us here. Oh, man. For this I say unto you by the word of the Lord that ye which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Lord. So in other words, people that are died in the Lord, amen, they are okay because one day they're going to be caught up. Amen. People that are alive today, listen, I'm telling you what the Lord is going to do. How is the Lord coming back? Listen to what he's going to do. In verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. My Lord. That means with a loud command, with a summons. My God. He's going he gonna to tell people, stand at attention. He's going to do, it's going to be a shout with a, the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. They're going to blow this trumpet. My God. It's going to be a blast. My Lord, it's going to let everybody, everybody in the whole world is going to hear this. My God. And when it happens, Lord have mercy, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That means we are alive today. Dead people that are died in the Lord is going to rise. Their spirit and soul that's in heaven right now is going to come down and get their body. My God. And they're going to get, uh, uh, and they get in their body and be glorified. And then they're going to rise up. My Lord. I tell you, somebody said, well, what if ashes? What if, what if I got cremated? It don't matter. Wherever your ashes <coughs> will be, they will come together that day. If somebody ate you up, my God, it don't matter. Whatever. The power of God, if he can make the world, and he can speak the world into existence. My God, God can do anything. I don't know how he's going to do it. I'm just going to believe that one day everybody that's dead is going to get up who's in heaven. They're going to get their body and have a glorified body. But when we see them arise, look at here. Oh man, verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds my God, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 
He said, wherefore, comfort one another with these things. In other words, we can't go year after year, month after year, month after month, and don't never comfort ourselves. Don't never put this in somebody's mind. My God, I'll tell you right now, we need to talk about this. We need to know what's going to happen one day. This is why we're living right. This is why I'm serving. I'm not just going to church to get some, going to church to get blessing, going to church to have a favor, going to so he can do something for me. All of that, <laughs> that's wet with the water. You know, that's going to happen anyway. But I'm telling you, our main reason why we are saved is to go back to be with the Lord one day. And I'm telling you right now, he's on the way. I'm telling you right now, this is going to happen. This is the scripture. Not one jot or till of my words of heaven and earth is going to pass away before my word don't come to pass. So Jesus is on the way. One day we will be caught up. In other words, that's mercy and that's grace. He caught us up because of the tribulation that's getting ready to hit the earth. So if you're not saved, you need to get saved. You got to hurry up because we're in the last days. If you are saved, you got to keep walking with him. Keep your faith in Christ. There's no time to be going over here doing that, going over here doing that, in unforgiveness over here. He already told you, have faith in Christ and stay in love. He already told you that. So there's no need to get out because, say, you don't want the rapture to come and all of a sudden now you're saved and you left here. It's not that you're going to hell. It's not that you're going to miss heaven. You just got to go through some tribulation because you were not ready to walk. I don't know that. I hope it don't happen, but you can't prove it's not going to happen. I believe that everybody's going back who believes in, but I don't know. That's why I'm preaching it to you today. We know not that day, not an hour. He's coming like a thief in the night. Why would he say that? Because he's not warning us. He's not telling us. He's not, oh man, I'm telling you, so we need to make sure, Lord have mercy, that we are Stand in Christ. Amen. I love that, man. Let's get into it. That was my introduction, man. Now I'm just going to get into a little bit about this judgment, what's going to happen. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Look what it says here. Oh, I tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about uh, the, there are seven, there are seven um, judgments, um, I mean, there are there's seven years judgments. There are seven <clears throat> judgments, and they're broken down. Amen. There are 21, 21 major calamities are going to happen. This is for the people who are left here. These are for the these are for the people who re rejected Jesus. These are for the people who said Jesus was not the only way. These are for the people who didn't believe in a savior. You're going to have to face the tribulation period. It didn't say you weren't going to be saved. You're going to have a chance to be saved in the tribulation period, but that ain't my testimony. I, don't, I need to get out of here on the first, how many, <laughs> on the first resurrection. That should be your goal. I'm telling you right here. But there are, there are seven seal judgments. There are seven um, trumpet judgments, and there are seven bowl uh, judgments. We're going to break down a little. Before I break it down, I need to, uh, it, it, what it is, it's going to show you every judgment that's going to happen in the seven years. And so I'm telling you right now, before I do that, I need to know, you need to know right in the midst of judgment what you need not to do. Look what it says here. Man. So look at, look at this. In Revelation 13, Revelation 13 first. Let's go to Revelation 13. Let me show you something. In Revelation 13, in verse 15, it says, And he had power to give life unto the age of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So the Antichrist and the false prophet, both are beasts, they're going to do everything that they can to get you to worship them. 
Amen. You're going to have to worship or you will be killed. And look what it says in verse 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in the right hand or in their forehead. So the mark of the beast, um, it can be in your forehand or it can be in your forehead, your palm of your hand or your forehead. Amen. They're going to take the mark. If you got to take the mark, to worship him. In other words, the reason why he wants you to take the mark is because he wants you, um, it's a mark of, it's, it mocks Trinity. See, 666 is mocking the Trinity. Father, Son, and it's a mockery. Uh, uh, and, and so he want you to take it. He want you to bow down and worship him. He, you, you know, and so he want you to take the mark. And he has it so, if you don't take the mark, look what it says here, Lord have mercy. And he, verse um, 16, he will call Wow, praise the Lord. I hope you receive that. Be a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. Thank you so much. Listen, I just want to say um, before we go that uh, we're still doing um, virtual and also we're doing live services. So please call in um, at 75782 Power, 75782 Power to register to uh, come to our services every Sunday at 10, 10 a.m. It's going to be powerful to come together. And those of you that want to still watch it on um, live virtually, you can do that at 10 at Dunamis um, Christian Center Facebook Live and also YouTube at um, Dunamis Power 320, Dunamis Power 320 every week, giving you the word of God. Thank you so much. Um, I know that something powerful is happening in your life because we serve a good God. If there may be somebody who's watching that's not really connected to God, this is the season to get connected and stay connected. If you were to die today and you don't really um, know if you would be with the Lord, Jesus died, shed his blood, rose up on the third day so you can receive him and serve him under grace. He loves you. He's not mad at anyone. The war's over. Jesus loves you, and we can serve him under grace today. So why don't you repeat after me? Lord Jesus, those that want to receive him. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ. I'm gonna say it, the son of the living God. I believe you died for me. You rose up on the third day of all power. I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my heart do something with my life in Jesus name. Praise God. Welcome to the family of God. Those of you who have said that, go ahead and let us know. Praise God so we can send you something to help you in your Christian walk. We love you now. God bless you and we'll see you next week.